everyone as you can probably hear I've still got the blues I'm still missing you and I hope you're still all coping well in our current situation well the fun that we've got today is to do with following people around um, following people around over a long period of time maybe discovering uh, what we can about how people change so let's get the uh, screen up where's it gone Okay, let's get that back to the beginning. Okay, so we're looking at two types of studies. We're looking at longitudinal and cross-sectional studies. And the thing that we'll do is that um, we'll, we'll kind of look at them side by side because they're both trying to do very similar things in different ways. We're both investigating maybe differences across time. Okay, so you see more what I been, mean about that in a minute. So we're interested in how people change. Um, what are the differences between young and old people? What are the differences between shy people and outgoing people? What are the differences between people from different cultures? And um, so developmental psychology is interested in how people change. What are the, what are the differences in the way, say, a two-year-old thinks compared to a 10-year-old or a 30-year-old, okay? And so we need to think of ways that we can do research that, able, that enables us to answer those kind of questions. What are the differences between young people and old people? That sort of thing, okay? So all I want to do in this lesson is to explain two ways of doing that. We're going to look at longitudinal studies, Cross-sectional studies, those are the two types of methods that you know. So you need to know what the, uh, you need to know what those mean and uh, be able to explain them. And you also need to know the advantages and disadvantages of each of those two methods. And then at the end, I'll give you a task that you need to do for me, okay? So, definitions first. And of what I've done is I've taken this, this definition, both of the definitions uh, from the uh, Educast website. Um, and so it's important that you that you may as well know the one that the board has, has given us okay so longitudinal study is a method that involves collecting conducting research over a long period of time in order to observe long-term effects of something on a specific behavior um, and it may use a range of other methodologies so they might do case studies they might do interviews observations or whatever okay key thing about that is that it is carried out on the same group of participants okay so a good example is the series there was a series done by itv that started in 1960 1963 i think it was um called the seven up series and it followed people starting from the age of seven in 1963 and they, they followed them every seven years okay so it's still going so it's been going for over 50 years um so that's one way of doing it is you can get one group of people and you can just follow them and uh to do uh, research on them every few years and then watch how they've changed okay um, another way of, of turning the difference between young people and old people for example um, means getting two separate groups of participants maybe a young group and an older group and then comparing them for various things so for example you might um, be interested who's who's more likely to take risks is it going to be young people or older people so you could get both groups together on the same day and go okay here's a questionnaire about risk taking and then you could compare their scores on the risk taking questionnaire two very different ways of doing we're investigating something that's very similar okay advantages of each method so the advantage of of looking at of doing a longitudinal study and you'll probably guess this is that there won't be any participant effects the participants are it's going to be the same participants tested every year or every five years or whatever you choose to do so but because of this you're also controlling for lots of other variables so um 
so you're not comparing someone who, for example, might have had a, 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 an upbringing in a very large family compared to someone who had uh, an upbringing in a small family, because that could make a difference in whatever you're investigating. Okay, so the participants are the same, and that's the key, key advantage. Um, the key advantage of a cross-sectional study is the speed that you can do. You can do it relatively quickly. So a longitudinal study could take years and years, um, and you can compare groups relatively quickly. If you give them, say, both questionnaires on the same day, for example, you could do more detailed research, but whatever way is still going to be a lot quicker um, than waiting for people to grow old and then giving them another questionnaire. Okay, so there's going to be disadvantages, obviously. So longitudinal studies, key a key problem is that they are long and that they're going to be long they're going to be expensive to finance um you're going to have all the trouble of tracing people and keeping in touch with them over years and years and part of that is an, connected to that is this idea of attrition so that so what that means is that people may drop out of the study and they say well i don't want to take part in this anymore and they've all got the right to withdraw obviously so they can do that if they want um and the other the other problem is that the ones who may drop out who don't want this to be part of the thing in five years time or 10 years time, they may be a certain type of participants, or it may be all the people who are uh, least successful, for example, or it may be all the people who are too depressed to take part. Now, if all the depressed people um, refuse to take part in your, your um, study 10 years in, that study is therefore badly biased because then you've, what you've got is you've got a group of participants without any depressed people in it at all, which obviously isn't going to be representative of the rest of society. So we've got a biased sample, which is going to make it difficult to generalise. Um, another problem is that participants may be, um, uh, may become aware of what the aims of the, of the study are. And uh, as a result of that, they may change their behaviour. So um, if people were involved in a, a smoking study, for example, and then they, dis and they discovered, um, they read some of the, the findings of a study that, that told them that actually smoking isn't particularly healthy for them, they may change their behaviour. So we're not going to get um, natural behaviour. Okay. Okay, so problems of a cross-sectional study, on the other hand, as you might expect, are participant variables. Um, if we're comparing teachers and doctors, for example, uh, the only difference between teachers and doctors isn't um, isn't their job, but also that the doctors are paid considerably more than teachers, for example. So they will have lots of there will be lots of differences connected with that. Um, also, we have these things called co cohort effects. So if you were comparing, for example, twenty-year-olds and eighty-year-olds, we're not just comparing different age groups. We're comparing the experiences that each um, each uh, of those groups has gone through. So if we were comparing, if we were looking at 80 year olds now, they'd be people who uh, lived through the problems of the Second World War. Um, and so that would be, um, that would be uh, very different. So their, their experiences growing up would be very different to what the 20 year olds had had. So the reason the 18 year olds are the way they are is not simply just due to do with their age, but it's also to do with that other stuff. And that's, that's something that we can't control. A good example of that would be so if those if the 80 year olds were growing up during the war, for example, they might have not had such a good diet as uh, 20 year olds do these days. And so as a result of that, that might have affected their uh, brain development, have, might have had an impact on their IQ. So the reason their IQ might be a bit lower if they were 80, if that was the, if that's what we found, might not be to do with the age. It might be to do with those other things like diet. OK, so. Um, a couple of things for you to do. Um, so say you want to, to investigate different attitudes to money comparing students and 40 year old adults. Think about which method you might use and why. And explain the problems that you think that might cause. Okay. So that'd be one. Looking at the difference in reaction times between 40 year olds and, uh, and students again which method we use and again and explain the problems that might be involved with that one okay okay well i hope you're all doing well do try and keep up with the work do try and keep getting stuff into me it's get it's a little bit slow at times but make sure you're getting it done so that when we do finally get back together 
uh, we will be roughly in the same place and that's really important. Okay, nice to see you. Um, I think I've got rid of my blues now, so um, hopefully the next one won't have that kind of music on. But you never know, do you? Take care of yourselves. See you.